which automakers can actually rival Tesla, and what exactly are they up against? Tesla released its first electric vehicle, the Roadster, in 2008 with the strategy of starting with a high-priced, low-volume sports car and using that money to fund future vehicles, all part of its master plan. Only about 2,500 Roadsters were sold in total, but it was enough to get Tesla to phase two of its plan. According to Elon Musk, new technology takes a few versions to optimize before reaching the mass market, and Tesla was competing with 150 years and trillions of dollars spent on gasoline cars. The second phase of this master plan, which was written in 2006, was then to use the money to create a more optimized mid-priced mid-volume vehicle, dubbed the Model S, which hit the market in 2012, and Tesla followed up with their first SUV, the Model X, in 2015. Combined, Model S and Model X reached a volume of around 100,000 vehicles sold in a year at their peak in 2017. While it wasn't all smooth sailing for Tesla and delivery estimates were delayed, Tesla eventually brought these great products to market that were loved by owners. Despite trying something new and surprising customers with electric vehicles that many thought were impossible to create with such high specifications, Tesla was ridiculed and made fun of all along the way. In November of 2015, former Daimler chairman Edzard Reuter said that Tesla was a joke and can't be taken seriously compared to the great car companies of Germany, and Musk was called a pretender. Even Bob Lutz, former vice chairman of General Motors and Chrysler, who was actually highly respected by Elon Musk, has predicted Tesla's demise multiple times over the years. In September of 2018, he said that Elon Musk doesn't know how to run a car company, and he called Tesla an automobile company headed for the graveyard. Back in 2015, Lutz stated that Tesla was in trouble, Tesla essentially needed to create car dealerships to survive, and the company had no secret sauce related to their battery technology. Despite all the naysayers, Elon Musk bet the entire company on the third phase of his master plan, unveiling the Model 3 in 2016 as a low-priced, high-volume vehicle. Automakers started to turn their heads after Tesla acquired over 325,000 reservation pre-orders for the Model 3 at $1,000 apiece. Now, Elon Musk also warned shareholders, customers, and other stakeholders that Tesla would be entering production hell to produce this vehicle. The real challenge was designing the car to be highly manufacturable and bringing up the Nevada factory in order to produce a massive number of batteries and the factory in Fremont to assemble the cars in an automated fashion. Musk was heavily criticized for over-automating and admitted later that the company was weeks away from bankruptcy due to delays and other hiccups with the manufacturing process. In the end, however, Tesla was able to survive and ramp up Model 3 production to a sustainable level and created the machine that builds the machine, essentially the Gigafactory production system using computer aided software design. As it stands today, Tesla's electric vehicles have acceleration specs that blow their gas-powered competitors out of the water. New software features such as Sentry Mode, which constantly records video around the perimeter of the vehicle, Dog Mode, which can regulate heat levels in the vehicle, autonomous driving features such as highway driving and summoning your car to pick you up across short distances, and over-the-air updates, which can control performance and even braking distance of the vehicles. Many of these features would not be possible without the giant battery at the core of each Tesla vehicle. Tesla Tesla's keen focus on battery technology has allowed them to quickly catch up to the range of many internal combustion engine vehicles. Automaker competitors who previously laughed at Tesla have not been able to achieve the same range as the 2012 Model S in their production cars. Tesla also owns and operates the largest network of supercharger charging stations all over the world and keeps the prices as low as possible for owners who are charging away from home. An interesting thing happened after Tesla set a goal to begin vehicle production a year after starting to build the first wholly owned Chinese Gigafactory. Tesla actually hit its deadline, bringing up Giga Shanghai within 11 months and producing vehicles at a run rate of around 1,000 per week at the end of 2019. Furthermore, Model Y, Tesla's low-cost SUV built on the same platform as the Model 3, was unveiled in March of 2019 with plans to begin the ramp up in late 2020. Of course, with Tesla's history of missed timelines, Customers and investors would likely not see this vehicle before mid-2021. However, thanks to Tesla's past failures and abundant learnings over the years, and drastic improvements in factory and vehicle design, Model Y is beginning deliveries in March of 2020, exactly one year after it was unveiled. Tesla appears to actually be accelerating and is already clearing a path for Giga Berlin and for its future product roadmap. It's now the second largest automotive company in the world by market cap worth $130 billion just behind Toyota, despite producing just 300 67,000 vehicles last year compared to Toyota's 10 million vehicles. That said, Tesla's accomplished such feats all without spending any paid advertising dollars. But how can Tesla compete with the so-called big boys, the large entrenched automaker incumbents, and their massive budgets, or even new EV startups and their Tesla killers? We're going to go through a multitude of car companies to see if any of them can actually rival Tesla. 
Gene Munster, once an analyst and now a venture capitalist who has been very positive on Tesla, was recently asked in an interview which automaker is in second place. His first answer was that he couldn't think of anyone, but after being asked multiple times, he said that it could be Ford. However, he did caution that it will become important to look at the balance sheet of these legacy automakers, something we'll do in a moment. Ford is already preparing its third electric vehicle, the Ford Transit delivery van, to hit the market in 2022. Unfortunately, Ford's first two vehicles, the electric F-150 and the Mustang Mach-E, have not yet hit the market either. Ford seems to be carefully dipping their toes into the EV space with the Mustang Mach-E, which will start at $45,000, slightly above the price of the Model Y, and perhaps nine months after the Model Y starts getting into the hands of customers. Model Y is technically Tesla's fifth generation vehicle, and the Model Y factory lines are built on Tesla's third major iteration of factory design, built on the same platform as the Model 3. Tesla has had so much experience improving the Model 3, and so the Model Y will likely be very refined off the bat, including highly advanced software that is already functioning on Tesla's other vehicles. Ford is on its first electric vehicle, and from the concept, we've already seen a lack of software refinement as the company spends negligible amounts of money on research and development, relative to its size and budget. We've also criticized the Mach-E itself for having a front face with a creepy clown smile. However, Ford has an overall branding issue with this vehicle as they don't want to cannibalize the very profitable gas car Mustang business, so they created a vehicle that isn't actually a Mustang and won't appeal to Mustang fans, and at the same time won't appeal to those who aren't interested in Mustangs, thanks to branding confusion. And the vehicle also has a plastic knob glued to the main center screen, which adds another moving part and takes away from the bitmap real estate. Ford claims to have 20 years of electrification experience, but as Elon Musk says, designing concept cars is easy, designing something to be mass produced is hard. Tesla has a Gigafactory in Nevada capable of producing 30 gigawatt hours of batteries per year, whereas Ford doesn't have a Gigafactory and therefore needs to purchase batteries from an outside source. Tesla's advantage of being vertically integrated allows them to optimize for efficiency and reduce cost, which means Ford might be losing money on the Mach-E in order to compete with Tesla and is subsidizing the losses with their internal combustion fleet. We've heard from multiple Tesla short sellers that Tesla has structural issues, but it appears that Ford has much larger structural problems than many people believe. First off, on a positive note, Ford has about $35 billion of cash on hand which is actually more than the entire $26 billion market value of the company. Ford would be worth more if it didn't have an automotive business attached to all that cash. That said, Ford behaves more like a bank than an automotive company. They borrow $140 billion of debt to lend out and fund car loans. Ford has $52 billion of credit debt payable within one year, backed by auto loans. Only $14 billion of debt is related to automotive, which is a lot considering the company's $26 billion market cap. That's over half their market value is just automotive debt. The other $140 billion is simply a risk that is not funded by deposits like a traditional bank, so they have to super leverage themselves in order to make money. Investors are clearly worried that if Ford's electric ambitions don't pay off, it could spell bad news. However, a transition to a whole new line of business has been historically very difficult for slow-moving, gigantic companies, especially if Ford is planning to replace its profitable ICE vehicles with money-losing electric vehicles. On top of that, Ford has a slew of middleman dealerships who don't benefit from selling electric vehicles, which don't break as much as compared to ICE vehicles, and could hurt their only source of income, service revenue. To make matters worse, Ford has a global pension plan, which is underfunded by $6.3 billion as of December 2019. Finally, Ford's bread and butter, and where most of their profit comes from, is from the F-Series, or the F-150 pickup truck, which will be under attack by Tesla's Cybertruck. Of course, Ford made an investment in pickup truck designer Rivian, which we'll talk about soon, but their investment likely won't replace billions of dollars of profit that Tesla has specifically targeted, trying to make a better vehicle than the F-150 in every way. Of course, very few people are taking the Cybertruck seriously, but with potentially over 530,000 pre-order deposits, it's no longer a laughing matter for Ford. General Motors is the largest auto company in the US besides Tesla, but is in a similar situation to Ford and a host of other automakers when it comes to credit loans, pension plans, unions, and dealerships. General Motors spun the banking portion of its business into Ally Bank in September of 2010 after the financial crisis. Nevertheless, GM still has a division called GM Financial, which has $89 billion of loans, 35 of which is due in the short term. GM also has about $10 billion of underfunded pension obligations. However, General Motors has been in the electric vehicle game for quite some time already. They have actually sold over 200,000 EVs, which means their U.S. tax credits have started to get phased out. 
Of the four best-selling EVs in the U.S. in 2019, numbers 1, 2, and 4 were Teslas, and the third was GM's Chevy Bolt, which has had lackluster demand. That said, in 2016, even Bob Lutz called GM's Bolt a compliance car, which GM is only selling to comply with California regulations. Furthermore, GM had admitted that it had no plans to put up any more money into setting up DC fast charging stations, which allow electric car drivers to charge their vehicles on the go. Moreover, GM CEO Mary Barra reportedly had her supply chain use Tesla suppliers even if they cost more. Instead of fighting Tesla off with better products, they simply tried to bottleneck the suppliers and slow them down to try and damage the company. Elon Musk has said multiple times that the rate at which Tesla can produce vehicles is as fast as the slowest part because you can't ship a car that's missing a part. In the past, Tesla has had many delays which forced them to bring a lot in-house and become even more vertically integrated, which in turn has made Tesla a stronger and more nimble company, kind of a backfire for GM. General Motors, recently in 2020, decided to commit more resources to the electric car game with what they call Altium batteries, claiming to be cheaper and have more range than a Tesla. Funny enough, GM says that its batteries contain modules that can be swapped out if needed, something that Elon Musk has just said that Tesla would be moving away from since the modules have always been in Tesla batteries but were never actually used for the swapping out feature and are now simply a source of extra cost. GM's so-called Altium batteries are of the pouch form factor and use cobalt, an expensive and unethical material, which GM claims to be cutting down by 70%, but Tesla has already made great strides in reducing cobalt to a minimum with the goal of eliminating it completely, something that Tesla will be able to achieve in China with its partnership with CATL, C-A-T-L, and a different battery chemistry that doesn't include cobalt. The buzzwordy name Altium alone makes it appear that marketing has taken the reins from the engineers at General Motors as the name tries to mask the fact that GM's batteries are nothing special and are inferior to Tesla's. That said, GM is said to be building its own battery factory similar to Tesla's Nevada Gigafactory, but in partnership with LG Chem to produce 30 gigawatt hours of batteries. Tesla, on the other hand, is beginning construction of its third Gigafactory in Germany, but at least General Motors has a plan to supply its vehicles with batteries which are in tight supply nowadays. At the same time, GM plans to continue with the Chevy Bolt and also resurrect the Hummer as its next electric vehicle. General Motors believes that making the same vehicles but having them be electric is what consumers want, whereas Tesla designs their vehicles from the ground up to be electric. Keeping in mind, of course, that the Hummer had a previous life as a gas-guzzling, worst fuel economy of all time vehicle, but will somehow impress consumers as an electric vehicle, even though regular electric vehicles have been struggling with range. However, GM believes it has the capabilities to make a 400 mile range battery, likely using a 200 kilowatt hour battery in a small vehicle and aiming for 2021. Meanwhile, Tesla currently offers 390 miles of range in the current Model S, which uses a 100 kilowatt hour battery pack. So either the electric Hummer has terrible range, or it has enough batteries to send the price much higher into the premium range. Also, keeping in mind that GM currently has 29% market share of the US truck market, it will also have to face off against the Tesla Cybertruck, starting at $40,000, and whose most expensive version is $70,000 that has 500 miles of range. Finally, General Motors is planning to spend $20 billion over the next five years to launch 11 new all-electric vehicles, including at least 20 new models by 2023, and during their presentation had to remind people that this was quite real. While it might not be complete vaporware, this certainly reminds me of the market response to Apple's iPhone, which was launching as many smartphones as they could so that there would be something out there for everyone. This actually contributed to high overhead in managing all of the different products and a loss of focus. It's interesting to see that in Tesla's case, the Model Y took years to come out, even though it was built on the same platform as the Model 3. Tesla is able to focus on a small number of products and refine and optimize them relentlessly. GM's plan to have 20 new models over the next three years is expensive and spreads out their resources. Especially now that GM's tax credits are getting phased out, they forgot to actually use the tax credits to fund their next set of vehicles. Instead, they seemingly wasted them on the money-losing Chevy Bolt. In the end, it's going to take a lot for GM to compete with Tesla on battery price and range, despite what the media may have you believe. GM hasn't even released their new battery product yet, and already the media is writing Tesla's obituary. Toyota is an interesting situation as they're the largest automotive company in the world, but they also have defined benefit pension plans, $100 billion in loans, and of course dealerships. As a matter of fact, Tesla used to make electric powertrains for Toyota, which shows that they aren't so easy to make. 
However, more recently, Toyota hasn't really participated in the electric vehicle theme as they've been focused on hybrid vehicles and hydrogen fuel cells, fuel cells as Elon Musk calls them. This is the Toyota Mirai, the first fuel cell powered vehicle from Toyota. Now there are a number of reasons why fuel cells make sense. They burn cleanly, can have decent range, and don't take long to refill with hydrogen. This compares to electric vehicles, which have low range, take too long to charge, and cost too much. Well hang on a second here, Tesla's Model Y SUV crossover vehicle is actually better than the full cell vehicle in range, price, and very much so in performance. Also, owning a Tesla and waking up every morning with a fully charged vehicle is much more relaxing than having to try to find a hydrogen fueling station. Furthermore, it costs about $8 to $10 depending on electricity prices to fully charge a Tesla, but a hydrogen equivalent could be upwards of $60. There's no real advantage of hydrogen over ICE cars even, except for maybe the clean burning fuel. Unfortunately, most people make decisions based on money economics, not on being green. However, in 2020, Toyota would like to introduce a massive fleet of battery electric vehicles over the next couple years. They released this rendered drawing of their plans, but maybe Toyota has a few tricks up their sleeves to take their battery electric vehicles from pre-concept to mass production. Toyota shared this roadmap showing that by 2050, so in 30 years from now, they may have a small fleet of BEVs or battery electric vehicles. This is a little bit embarrassing for a company that has been known for out-manufacturing the US car companies back in its heyday. Volkswagen, the now number three largest automaker in the world, but tied with Toyota for selling about 10 million vehicles per year, and also has billions of dollars on cash on hand, and the same dealership issues of the legacy automakers. After the Dieselgate cheat device emission scandal, Volkswagen's punishment was to invest billions of dollars into an electric charging network, Electrify America. Still much smaller than Tesla's supercharger network, but this put Volkswagen ahead of other automakers. They are planning a whole slew of new offerings, but Volkswagen has multiple subsidiaries which aim to hit different market segments with their offerings. However, with the subpar 125 mile range from the e-Golf to the subpar 201 mile range from Porsche starting at $150,000, it's clear that the compliance charging network that Volkswagen has funded gives new meaning to few and far between. Nevertheless, Volkswagen has the opportunity to improve its vehicles over time and remain a large player in the auto industry. That said, Tesla will have a product in each of these segments as well. Next year, the Porsche taken will be up against the new Roadster, which will have over 600 miles of range. Now moving along to Rivian, which is an 11 year old private company startup that focuses solely on electric vehicles and has the same advantages as Tesla when it comes to the lack of dealerships, unions, pensions, and a gas car division. Rivian's initial plans were to release the R1T, a pickup truck, even though the surprise robot eye look didn't bode well for some employees. I told RJ the lights are ugly. And the R1S SUV for a niche market targeted at outdoorsy people. Many people saw this company as the next Ford, and so Ford ended up investing in Rivian. However, Amazon also stepped in with an investment and ordered 100,000 delivery vans to Rivian's roadmap. However, these vans will be delivered over a 10 year span, so about 10,000 vehicles per year keeping in mind that Rivian has yet to bring any vehicle to market. Tesla went through the three phases of its master plan, starting with the low volume, high price vehicles, and it appears that Rivian may be about to enter that phase. Of course, now with three products to worry about, the small company is being spread more thinly thanks to Amazon. As Elon Musk has alluded to, it's not about throwing more money at vehicles, it's about concentrated talent, something that Rivian has yet to prove, and if they want to achieve scale, they will have to go through the same struggles that Tesla went through to make the Model 3. It's interesting to see that the legacy automakers have experience with scale but not with electric vehicles, and that the startups have experience with electric vehicles but none with scaling to the mass market. While the Rivian R1T looks like a traditional pickup truck, it too will likely be entering the market at the same time as the Tesla Cybertruck. The Rivian starts at $70,000, offering 230 miles of range, and has yet to reveal the pricing for up to 400 miles, whereas Tesla Cybertruck starts at $40,000 for 230 miles of range, and the highest end Cybertruck is priced the same as the lowest end Rivian, but is expected to have more than double the range. Part of the reason is that Rivian is using expensive up to 180 kilowatt hour batteries and has four motors in its vehicles. Tesla can achieve better performance by being more efficient with its batteries and using a maximum of three motors in its highest end version. The timing for Rivian will be critical for the company and may pose an existential risk if Rivian has trouble competing against Tesla's advanced technology and dent-proof stainless steel frame. While Tesla is focused on dethroning the Ford F-150, the best-selling car in the US, Rivian may be a niche player. Rivian's main focus niche was for the outdoorsy adventure-oriented market segment. However, Tesla took a direct shot at Rivian and aims to be actually more practical with a 6.5-foot bed compared to Rivian's 4.5-foot bed.
Bollinger Motors. It's interesting that new startup electric vehicle companies get more credit than the legacy automakers. At least traditional auto has mountains of cash and they can try to make electric vehicles and fail and still have enough cash to try a few more times again. It's much more difficult for a startup to get a second chance. Bollinger, which was started in 2015, is aiming to produce the world's first all-electric on and off-road truck. It might be tough to hit that goal with Rivian and Tesla hot on its tail. Even more so, the pickup truck starts at $125,000 and only has 200 miles of range. Most startup companies are starting where Tesla did back in 2008 with the first Roadster, which would technically put them about 12 or more years behind Tesla. Also, for the same price as the Bollinger starting price, one can purchase two of the highest end Cybertrucks, each with 500 miles of range. Now let's have a look at some Chinese auto companies, starting with NIO. The main reason NIO is so popular in the United States is that the company is publicly traded on the stock exchange. NIO sold a total of just over 20,000 vehicles in China in 2019, doubling its prior year's sales. Although NIO started off with a bang and was said to be the Tesla of China, NIO has not yet lived up to this reputation with the Chinese consumers. NIO has a strange business model which partially focuses on providing areas where people can sit around called NIO House. This is expensive for real estate and rent and doesn't contribute at all to the business. NIO also uses large battery swapping machines as a way to quickly charge up a vehicle's battery by swapping it out with a fresh one. This is something that Tesla had piloted in California but decided to move away from the idea, especially as Tesla superchargers continue to get faster and faster. On the other hand, battery swapping stations are expensive and expensive to maintain and have many moving parts prone to breaking more often than say a supercharger with no moving parts. The other thing with startups, even in China, is that they run into some of the same problems that Tesla had when it first started. They have to provide their own service centers, something that legacy automakers already have. Tesla's Elon Musk has said that service centers and superchargers have been critical to sell vehicles in a specific area. Without these two things, consumers don't really want to buy the cars. So because Neo needs to open service centers, but has very few cars on the road, these service centers become very expensive to maintain as they wait for business to build up and warranties to run out. Again, this is something that had limited Tesla's growth and expansion for many years. NIO also has an atrocious balance sheet for an automaker, with only $137 million in cash, down from $3 billion at the end of 2018. Luckily for NIO, the Chinese government of the city of Hefei bailed out NIO with a $1.4 billion capital injection in exchange for building a new headquarters in the city. So the Chinese aren't so quick to let NIO go bankrupt. That said, in the last 12 months, NIO lost $44 per share, which is a lot for this $3 stock. It's lost about 15 times the value of the entire company in the last year. BYD is a Chinese company founded in 1995 that makes everything from cars to buses, sky rails, forklifts, trucks, batteries, and even solar panels. They were also making money from smartphone components and assembly services, and they make gas cars and electric vehicles. Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway reportedly owns 8% of BYD, and BYD does have a bus factory in California and sells buses to the U.S. government. BYD does move much quicker, it seems, than the other automakers from around the world. However, due to its vast array of different products, BYD doesn't have the same type of focus that a company like Tesla has. Elon Musk was once asked about their car and he said, have you seen their car? I don't think they have a great product. That said, in a recent interview, Warren Buffett said that one day Charlie Munger, the vice chairman at Berkshire, called him and said we need to buy BYD because the person who runs it is better than Thomas Edison. Of course, Buffett responded by saying that isn't good enough, but they eventually bought part of the company. Buffett says that BYD has so much business to do in China that it will likely focus on its home country for the foreseeable future, which could give Tesla a further lead in other parts of the world even as Tesla begins to compete in China. BYD is very much a Buffett company and expects to grow revenue solidly over the next five years. In 2018, the company made about $17 billion in revenue and $380 million in profit for the full year. The company is smaller than Tesla by revenue, but does have big ambitions. In November of 2019, BYD announced a partnership with Toyota to supply batteries to them. However, BYD has plans to spin off its automotive battery division in 2022, removing key vertical integration that has worked very well for Tesla and allows Tesla to design battery packs that work well with the powertrain and the rest of the vehicle, something that BYD intends to give up. This would make them less competitive against Tesla directly. Though it appears that BYD's plan is to produce over 120 gigawatt hours and to supply other companies with batteries, a different business model than Tesla. So we've tried to look at some of the major car companies in the world and those new startups or players with emerging products in the EV space to see who can take on Tesla. 
Of course, there are many other players in the industry. Let us know in the comments if you believe we missed a true potential Tesla killer company. The current legacy automakers have deep pockets, experience in scaling, and plenty of service centers, albeit tied to the dealership model that consumers despise. Their multiple layers of bureaucracies make them slow moving and unwilling to risk their current very profitable pollution car business, and they lack expertise in electric batteries and technology compared to Tesla and even some of the other EV startups. On the other hand, we have these startups working solely on low volume, high priced electric vehicles, but with limited resources, and although they look similar to Tesla, they resemble more the Tesla from 10 years ago, but with a slower pace of innovation. Finally, there are a class of Chinese car makers, sheltered by the Chinese government, but they are now up against Tesla in China, which the Chinese government has also taken a liking to. In conclusion, a lot of the companies talk a big game, but have yet to deliver a compelling product, and so at this time, there are no real rivals to Tesla yet. We hope you enjoyed this video. Please hit the bell button to subscribe and be notified of upcoming Tesla videos and smash the like button to help support this video. You could also support the channel at patreon.com slash the market is open. Thanks so much for watching.